Uh, Marco just uh, raised uh, one question, which is, uh, yes, that's true, but when we get, have different measurements in different places, we have also different topographies, and how do we account for that? So coping with the rain. <laughs> we have to cope with the rain. How is coping with the rain? I, uh, you will see that coping with the rain, it seems very complicated, but at the end is very simple. The most complicated thing here with this uh, theory of, a, uh, a, a, let's say, em empirical <laughs> models of radiation, which is, a, is to remind all the situation, which is co quite complicated because we have a, a, a huge number of factors, uh, so to keep in mind, but it's not complicated by itself. So the terrain, which is heated, but is it heated and heated? I don't know. Is a, uh, 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 it's warmed and heat by by the rays. And uh, when the when the rays arrive to a point, we, uh, there is an inclination. Uh, the the surface has a slope and a gradient. So open the gradient that we were uh, learning how to estimate uh, last week. So um, yeah, nothing comes uh, or casually. Uh, if you have a northern slope, northern slopes uh, also is uh, yeah, in shadow sometimes. Depends also on the inclination, the relations with the sun. And uh, I have these nice uh, funny things. So one of my former students uh, went to do the PhD in, the, in Australia. And uh, once, uh, the first month that was they, there, he, he told me, oh, Ricardo, I have a problem. He says, uh, it, it looks like that the south facing slopes here uh, are more humid than the north faces. And uh, my answer was, I assume that your office has no windows. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, that was the right uh, question. It was uh, put in, a, in that uh, boxes where usually in some university, students are put without windows and sharing things, and they was completely forgetting to be in the south hemisphere. <laughs> and so uh, the, the situation was completely reversed from the northern hemisphere. So, uh, to, to get in, now with our vectors uh, that I introduced before, the calculation are conceptually uh, quite easy because now instead of considering the zenith here, I uh, remind that here is here topocentric. Uh, this is our topocentric, topocentric uh, frame of reference, and uh, uh, you have uh, you have the uh, the, topo uh, the topography, and in each point you build the normal to the topography. So I am say, uh, telling you already the, the solution here. Instead of considering Z, the, uh, the, the, the zenith axis, axis as our surface was a flat, locally flat, we consider the normal to the topography. So the only thing, the complicated thing is here to do is to calculate which is the normal of a given surface. Uh, the unit vector normal to the surface uh, can be estimated by uh, this way. Don't uh, ask me now why it is like that and why this is the L square here. But the L square is the, the, the side of the cell. Okay, I get it. Um, uh, because uh, uh, you can uh, represent the volume as a vector and the product of vectors 
gives you the, uh, the side of the cell. If you take, if you take a square, you take a vector of, of the two sides that form the cell, and you do the areas uh, with the pro, uh, vector uh, product, the area is another vector which is orthogonal, and that's the, the intensity of the side. It is not actually a vector in, uh, um, in mathematical, in real mathematical sense, because uh, it, it, uh, it has not the, the, the right symmetric properties that uh, <coughs> true transformation is a uh, pseudo vector, but doesn't matter. This explains why there is the L square here. So, this is, for instance, the representation of the vector normal to the surface for the Mont Blanc. Here I uh, didn't write in Italian or in French, just saying Mont Bianco. <laughs> 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 no. Monte Bianco. So that's the image that we saw, uh, we saw also at the beginning. We have the solar angle. The solar angle we get from, uh, I, I remind you, from uh, mm, latitude, uh, the hour of the day, the, and what is called the, the hour angle, and declination. But we have it. And, and the what about and, and U is calculated by this one. So if we, did, if we do the, the scalar product between the two, we obtain the cosines of the angles between the two vectors, <coughs> which is what we need to project the, the intensity of solar radiation on that surface. This is S, as I reminded you before. Uh, before we were lucky because only the, the, the third component was surviving with the zenith. Now that we have a more complicated ve vector, also the other two are, uh, are contributing to the, uh, to the estimation of the cosinus, but essentially nothing is changing. So we calculate the cosinus of S, uh, of S and because this is the, the two vectors, we just uh, multiply each uh, com component by each component and sum, what we learn from elementary uh, vector calculus, which can be, at the end, a, a quite complicated formula from the point of view of writing by hand. If I would ask to an exam to a student to say, okay, write down the for that formula. <laughs> by hand is uh, just an exercise of uh, memory, but it is easy from the conceptual point of view. So we have the slope and uh, we have the, the thing, but the final result, uh, which is uh, important, is that nothing has changed with before from the form of the formula. So the solar radiation is exactly the uh, co uh, astronomical correction, the, the solar constant, and the cosinus between the solar angle and the normal to power surface. Instead, before we were considering the normal, the, the normal of a flat surface, so it was coinciding with the same. All the rest is as, as it was before. So when we had uh, um, absorption, absorption and uh, things, uh, the formulas remain the same, exactly the same as before. We, we don't have to modify anything of what uh, we did. <coughs> In this case, as uh, you see now, that uh, if you look out, uh, we have direct solar radiation, no more diffuse someone um, uh, close the curtain, curtain here for that reason. Solar, direct solar radiation is uh, really important for us. And um, here you see a very rough landscape, a romantic picture with the river and things. 
Uh, when we are in a landscape like this, we don't have only to do with diffuse and direct solar radiation. Actually, we have to understand where we, where we are. Uh, because we can be in shadow, and we have to calculate the shadow. The situation, more or less, uh, can be this one. If the sun is coming from the direction draw by the uh, yellow lights, you see that it then comes from uh, uh, from left to right, and uh, you have uh, the uh, more darker point, the uh, gray, dark gray point. We are in shadows, and the uh, um, lighter one are in light. So uh, we have to put a coefficient in front of our calculation, say, first this point is in shadow or not. If it is in shadow, in the shadow we just have diffuse radiation. If it is in light, we have the direct, direct uh, plus the diffuse radiation. So we have to decompose this, those things. Also this problem has uh, computationally some <coughs> For calculation, but uh, someone in, uh, implemented the algorithm for, for us, in, in particular Coripio uh, in this thesis. And it's also always based on the, the idea that we can use the solar angle to calculate also the, uh, the shadows. So uh, at the end, it results quite simple to, to estimate also this part of it. That is not a full story yet. When we are in a rough topography, not only we, we have uh, shadows, but also uh, we we have uh, uh, we don't see the whole the whole sky. Uh, we don't see an, an hemisphere. We are not in the middle of the ocean where we see the uh, whole uh, semisphere above us. We have uh, we have mountains. So what happens is that the diffuse radiation is not coming from every direction, but only on the fraction of the sky, the visible fraction of the sky. And then we have to estimate what we call the angle of view, or sky view factor. Meaning this is a number between zero and one that tell us according to the landscape where we are, which part of the, uh, how, how which is the fraction of sky that we see. And then we have here diffuse radiation, divided in Rayleigh scattering, diffused by aerosol, diffuse radiation due to multiple scattering, which is a thing which is implemented in the, in the software that you will use, all this part, and all this part are actually parameterized. So often you don't take even care of it. <laughs> so, what is the uh, sky view factor? For instance, for a point uh, there, the sky view factor is the one that I draw here, and obviously in three dimension. But if you are there, you have a smaller sky view factor. If you are in the canyon, you have even even a smaller sky view factor. You all. Oh, in a canyon, as you know, you almost see just diffuse radiation. Just you have only a few times the direct radiation there. And to give a correct answer for a particular point, we have to answer to all these questions, which is our sky view factor, and uh, what is, which is the part of uh, are we in shadows or not? Uh, do we have just diffuse radiation or uh, diffuse radiation and direct radiation? Which is the attenuation of the atmosphere? And which is uh, the angle uh, at 
which we are uh, deceiving the sun. So, summing up, you know, we have an equation like this one, where we have all these effects. The diffusion radiation times the visual angle, Q plus the factor that tells us that if we are in shadows, for all the correction we have for the direct radiation. Remember that so far, uh, light is not yet arrived on the terrain in our derivation. Or uh, when it hits the terrain, we have also to have a, 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 the refle a reflection part, I mean, in the albedo. So we have to uh, add this alpha coefficient. Here, uh, all, everything is put as uh, uh, we don't have selection between uh, wavelengths. Actually, the albedo is differential on, on, on different wavelengths, otherwise we will see all gray and the satellite the same. But uh, uh, it depends for the purposes we are using. When we are, <coughs> uh, um, we are interested on the global energy or the global energy for photosynthetic activity, we are uh, interested to the sum to all over the wavelengths, and so this this is the integrate the, a, a factor that integrates over, over the wavelengths. Obviously, for coping with the remote sensing and things like that, or images, for images, we have to separate those <coughs> alpha uh, for their wavelengths. We have to uh, go uh, deeper and go to what we call the. Um, the uh, wavelength signature <coughs> of the landscape. This alpha is pretty much a property of the surfaces with are heated, but uh, okay, and here we have uh, an example of estimation of how, how, how this alpha is important. Uh, here you see that uh, there is a strong variation which is uh, the snow, snow, if it is fresh, can be can reflect back 90% of a direct solar radiation. If it is old, it can be quite quite gray or quite dark, and so it has a, lo a, lo uh, a, 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 a low uh, reflectivity back. In the the average alpha for the uh, for the all the earth is 0 3 so it's pretty low we are around here as we see uh, any 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 surface has uh, is uh, own uh, reflectivity water is pretty dark because because it's pretty dark because uh, uh, the light heat waters goes inside the water, is diffused inside the water, and doesn't come back as, as light. So actually for, we are here for the surface hydrological cycle, and then for the, for, except for snow, which is a quite peculiar way. We don't see snow in these classes, but would be interesting indeed, maybe next year. And uh, so we have peculiarity to account for. But the albedo is also depending on the way we are looking, because it's not perfectly isotropic. It's not the same it's if the observer, if the sun is here and the observer is here, it's different than if the observer is here and the sun. If there is some uh, difference from the angle. So that we have table for a needle of surfaces. So you mean you know in your surface uh, what, it, what there is in your surface, maybe also from a uh, satellite uh, or, a, or remote sensing. And then from satellite or remote sensing, uh, uh, ident identifying the surfaces, you can uh, say, oh, 
those more or less on average are this albedo and so and so. And then we can calculate the, the real energy absorbed by the surface. And then I am doing in a minute what actually takes a lot of time to be to be done carefully. And this can can have effect on the single point, maybe no, it depends also on the scale we have analyzing the problem. But if we are uh, if I if I, uh, I am here and I have to calculate the things in a single point, all these factors must be accounted for ca carefully. Otherwise I can do huge errors. On average on a large landscape obviously a lot of this mess up and is much less important. Okay, the spectral signature is important, and uh, especially if we cope with the remote sensing, and we are going to cope with the remote sensing more and more in the next decade. So uh, we have uh, to start to open the matryoshka of uh, the of the of the solar radiation things uh, among wavelengths, among bands of wavelengths according to, to get the right answer uh, from remote sensing. The mm, remote sensor already do it, but uh, so far what we do in remote sensing is actually to get uh, uh, black boxes that does the works for us sometimes, unless some people work directly on the things, and we don't really know what they do. So, but remote sensor sometimes are very bad hydrologist. As a hydrologist, could be very bad remote sensor. Or there is someone in between which is good in, in both, or uh, possibly. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, but there is a way where we, we will, is already exploding as a part of our discipline, and but uh, it will be still for, for years and years. So, one, one the radiation finally uh, arrived to the terrain, it hits the terrain, warms the terrain. And uh, when it warms the terrain, it causes uh, phase changes. One is uh, evapotranspiration, we will see tomorrow. And uh, obviously, uh, it has also, um, also the ice, the sublimation of ice into, into vapor, which is for snow, for instance, important, but also in general for the flow in soil. Another topic that we, we didn't deal with uh, the cryosphere actually in this course, but all this is important for that. And obviously it doesn't just uh, make changes of phases, but also here I didn't mention, but the most important thing is to feed the plants. Radiation feed the plants, so we are, what, 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 uh, whatever we see outside there is, is mostly due to that thing, that there is a, the radiation that comes, uh, that's a very small part of, of radiation, one over uh, 500 photon, photons is uh, used to do photosynthesis, photosynthesis, photosynthesis builds up what we call life, ecosystem, and so and so and so and so. So radiation at the end is very important. But it is, it has, uh, as we start from the beginning, it's, uh, uh, there are particular conditions in which the radiation could be fruitful here. The composition of our atmosphere that uh, actually is, uh, has feedbacks from uh, the fact that uh, Life is uh, life is uh, in the air because we have oxygen in the atmosphere. <coughs> Otherwise, we would have most mostly carbon dioxide, like in Venus, or like all the other uh, planets that, that have an atmosphere. And so, that is a question that uh, it, it would be interesting to discuss and uh, study the interaction between the whole system with the whole. But now we go to take a coffee. <laughs>